Hi, my name is Adrienne Oliver and I'm with the Remax Universal. Part of my mission as an agent is to have my clients make smart financial decisions. So in order to make a smart financial decision, you first have to gain the knowledge. So today I'm going to be talking about tax deferred 1031 exchanges. So there are several different types of clients that these would apply to. Investors, uh, people that are about to retire and kind of right off into the sunset. So my seniors or my active adults, as they sometimes like to be called. Also, you have people who own a home and they are going, they're a married couple and they're going to make more than a half a million profit on the property or they're going to make more than 250 profit as a single person. If you do those two items, the tax man will take a fourth of your income. So this is a way to avoid that. Um, there's all kinds of different strategies. I'd love to meet with you or your family individually to talk about the specific strategy that will work best for you. But I strive to have all of my clients make smart financial decisions. So part of that is education. So today I'm going to be kind of giving you the basics of tax deferred 1031 exchanges. So there's some basic rules that I want to review with you so that you can start thinking about this as something that you have available to you. The first thing is the properties, both old and new, must be used in trade or business or held for investment. So you cannot live in these properties. It can't be your dwelling. They have to be trade, business, or investment. So you can hold the property as your second home. You can rent it to a relative. You, have, you can do all kinds of things, but you can't live in it as your primary residence. The property of this held in resale is considered a dealer property. So it's not eligible for 1031 exchange. A personal residence is also not eligible for a 1031 exchange. So that's the first rule. The property must be exchange for a kind-like property. So kind-like property has different meanings. So you can trade a residential for a commercial. You can trade all of those things. You can you know, sell a shopping center and buy multiple other investment properties, but it has to be an investment and it has to be the same price. So whatever is the overages or what they call the boot in 1031 exchanges, you would then have to pay the 1031 on. So that's rule number two. Must be exchanged for kind-like properties. Number three, the names of the title holders on the replacement property must match those on the title of the relinquished property. For instance, I have an LLC. I have a home that is an investment home that I invested in a long time ago that's in that LLC. If I want to exchange that property, I then have to purchase another property in the LLC. I can't use my LLC property to purchase a personal property. The names on the title have to match. So number four, replacement properties must be identified within 45 days of transferring the relinquishment property. The timeline on 1031 exchanges is the biggest issue that I see. It's not hard. It sounds super overwhelming. People get overwhelmed with it. They get delayed with it. And that's what causes most of my issues. You have 45 days to identify kind like properties. What you should do is you should have a list a list of multiple properties and that way if one doesn't work out you can go with the next one so make that list very robust make sure that you have three properties for each item so like for instance if you are ch exchanging a property for a property and they're the same amount make sure you have three so that's my advice there number five the Replacement property must be acquired or closed with title within 180 days or the tax filing deadline, whichever comes first, of the transferring of the exchange property. So once you sell that first property, you have 180 days to purchase the property. So that's another timeline that has to be met. That's why I'm saying when you identify them within 45 days, make sure that you have three for each one that you want to exchange. The tax filing deadline can be extended to preserve the 180 day method if needed. That's a very complicated process. Uh, I prefer not to do that with my clients, but we can do it just in case something breaks. Number six, there's no limit on the number of properties that can be exchanged. So for instance, you can exchange one property for 20 properties. You can exchange 100 properties for one property. There's no limit. So you, it's not like you can only exchange five or you can only exchange four. There's no limit on the number, it just the numbers have to add up. So the limits on the replacement property are as follows. So there's three limits. 
the maximum of replacement properties without regard for fair market value, which is otherwise known as the three property rule, which is commonly used. So the maximum replacement properties without regard to fair market value is three. Okay, so there's no limit, but there is a farm fair market value rule, which I know sounds super confusing, but call me, I'm certified in this, I will help you. Number two, the any number of replacement properties with aggregated value not exceeding 200% of the value of the property relinquished. So for instance, if you are selling a property that is half a million, you then cannot go buy over a million dollars worth of property. So you can take out loans, you can do all of that fun stuff in order to increase the value of the property that you own, but it can't be over 200% of what you're relinquishing. Any number of replacement property, if the exchanger receives 95% of the out aggregate value of the property identified. Again, that's the market value rule. So 95% of the aggregate value of all the identified properties. So those are some rules, basic rules for 1031 exchange. By no means is this in depth. I actually take courses on this subject every single year, if not, uh, and also keep up with it via you know my reading, my education, my ongoing market. I have done these properties. They're very popular, especially for people exchanging into Texas. Texas sometimes will have cheaper property than other more expensive states like California, those type of things. So if you don't live in Texas, but you'd love to work with me, I can definitely help you with some investment properties. My name is Adrienne Oliver. I'm with Remax Universal, and I look forward to helping you and your family. Thank you.